Hello and welcome to Growing Pains. I'm Rod Gilbert and this is the show that celebrates our teenage years. I'll be asking three famous faces to confess the deepest secrets and most embarrassing moments of their youth. This isn't television, this is therapy with adverts. <laughs> At the end of the show, the most embarrassing teenager will win this, the coveted Growing Pains trophy. Yeah. Yours <laughs> to take away. What's going on there? That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. That is a bag of shame over the head. Wow. Uh, let's find out who will be spilling their adolescent beans. It's Jimmy Carr, Charlie George, and Martin Kemp. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome Thank you to the show. Good to be here. Welcome to Growing Pains. Right, to help get your juices flowing, brought you some uh, throwback snacks <laughs> to get you in the mood. Jimmy, what have you got? Uh, I've got there. Um, well, from my earliest years, I've got some coffee in a bottle, because uh, my mother would give me coffee in a bottle. From the no. age of about three, <laughs> no. I would get no. milk and coffee so in a bottle. When I went down for an afternoon nap, my kind of early memories get like, <laughs> I would get coffee in a milky coffee in a bottle for your afternoon nap. She was um, she's quite a character, my mother. <laughs> and then I've got a white Russian there, which was my sort of drink of choice in my teenage years. Uh, latterly, uh, we would have pints of white Russian. <laughs> I seem to remember it being quite, quite a sweet treat. I, I don't know. Um, so that's house party drink. Oh, Christ, that brings me back. Yeah, that's, exactly, yeah. that's gorgeous, yeah. <laughs> I would recommend it. Uh, Charlie, I think I might be got? lactose intolerant as well. I'm not yeah. sure what... This is a major curdle fest. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Um, I've got refreshers. So we were really into, like, competitive eating. So things that are hard and challenging. We used to have food competitions that were very intense. And refreshers would be involved in that because they're like... I've seen people cry over refreshers. They're so... <laughs> and then these we used to steal from the cinema, and these are my favourite fizzy, um, fizzy blues. They're from the pick and mix, aren't they? From the pick and mix. Yeah. These were the ones that we would always try and steal, and they sort of make your face sort of... And then Smirnoff Ice. Alco Pops were our big thing for going out, and because we would be skin, we'd share one between several of us, so we were definitely not drunk, <laughs> but we'd pretend to be drunk on these. So. You do, you, everybody pretended to be drunk when you were a kid. You weren't really. I was drinking pints of white Russian. I was... Martin, what have you got? I've got the old curly whirlies and uh, some sherbet straws. And the Schlitz beer was... The first time I saw this beer was in the Blitz nightclub in wow. Covent Garden. I think you're going to be too cool to win this cool, as a no. team. I think you... I think, that's, team, my guess. Cool. that's my guess. That's my guess. Wait, you, you, were you weren't cool. cool as a teen? No. You were in oh. Spandau Ballet. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's, that's my later teen. Yeah, how old were you when you joined Spandau Ballet? I was 17. Yeah, you can go home now. Yeah. You've got <laughs> nothing. I was 17. You've got nothing embarrassing. Yeah. No offence, by the way, you are not going to win tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, these three are now in competition to win the coveted title of most embarrassing teenager. As we go, I'll be judging their young lives and their adolescent lowlights will go in this box, which I will then hide under a pile of dirty clothes in a teenager's bedroom where it will remain undisturbed for all eternity or until they leave home, whichever comes soon. <laughs> to show that my guests aren't the only ones putting their embarrassing teenage lives on the line, this is a picture of me. <laughs> 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 that is a little shy Rod Gilbert, about 19 on the end there. That is a lad's trip <laughs> to France, and that is me, I would say, trying to look cool. <laughs> that age looking cool meant appearing like you don't give a shit about anything or anyone. <laughs> say cheese, piss off, and like my mate Ian there, I'm not even going to dignify this situation by giving you the finger. Sticking your visa or flicking the bird is for amateurs. You're looking at a black belt teenage mardy arsehole, mate. And lifting a finger is not in my job description. So, in the interest of fairness, that picture of me as a black belt teenage mardy arsehole is going in the box. <laughs> Done. Right. I asked you all to bring uh, bring a, a teenage yeah. pick in. It's always yeah. my favourite part of the show when we get to see the teenage yous. Let's have a look at you all at once. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Oh. Well, I was I was actually a middle aged uh, dinner lady. As <laughs> <laughs> Jim, your hair. You look like the ghost of a dead Victorian child. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at you, uh, Charlie. What is? <laughs> what's happening? Were you in Mission Impossible? What's happening there? Yeah. Some kind of performance. Was a very young scaffolder. No, <laughs> that nice. um, no, that that is me at circus school. You went to circus school. Yeah. I went in... to just a regular school. 
Martin, let's have a look at yours. <laughs> Your black and white shot. There it is. <laughs> hey, that's my old school picture. You look like a, a, a confident, happy young lad. Yeah, I was. But you know what it's like when you queued up for those school pictures? You got in line, you got to the end, and they combed your hair with that really smelly... The, um, like, horrible liquid. What, you know, like knit stuff? Yeah, knit stuff. <laughs> right before you just took the picture. And it was awful. I'm going to try and guess what you, what you did for a living. Yeah. Charlie, I'm presuming you did something to get money in the cir circus-y stuff? I mean, circus and industry in which you, there's just so much money in circus. But, no, I had a lot of um, different jobs when I was in Bristol, and one of my first jobs uh, was working in a coffee shop, and uh, I got fired. What did you do? Got called into the manager's office, and he said, I've been watching the CCTV, and I've seen that you've been giving free muffins to old ladies. <laughs> 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 because, you know, like, they had their little pension purse and they've got their pennies and they would take so long and I was a bit impatient and I was like, oh, go on, just have it. <laughs> but I kept doing it and I didn't realise that it was all being filmed. <laughs> well, Terrible. Can't condone it. I'd have done the same if I was your boss. Mm. <laughs> Jimmy, I mean, You're it's hard to... man. You're a hard <laughs> man. You know, I've got rules and rules, Jimmy. But looking at you today, I mean, it's hard to imagine how you earned your pocket money at that age. I was entirely feckless, as the photo, I think, tells me. <laughs> no teenager. Uh, well, I had like, a couple of jobs in bars and cafes and removal men, but only ever for a couple... <laughs> what? what? Bars and cafes and removal men? I was a removal man for a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> we got a picture of you, I think. Around this time, is... Look at that. Oh, <laughs> that's not well, isn't it? Well, people <laughs> let you into your house. <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't do... I, would, I honestly, I didn't do anything. Like, everyone else did the removals. I was just there for vibes. Like the I'm hype man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like the high was mate. It, was I was like the bez. The bez of the removal work. Yeah, I didn't really... <laughs> they're picking stuff up, it's not really me, guys, but <laughs> tremendous work. Well done. I presume Spandau isn't the most embarrassing teenage job you had. No, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> so we've got to talk about a Spandau a bit. Uh, yeah. On top of the pops... In a band, in a top... Yeah. What, what the hell? You were, like, not just the one. You were the handsome one as well. <laughs> yeah. You were only in the band. What did you play in the band? Oh, I, I was bass guitar. Yeah, no, I'm not musical either. I'm yeah. Not... <laughs> but, listen, but, but the idea that you were in the band because, like, you were the one that everyone liked. Well, I... So people couldn't look away. It's, well, it's hateful. It's a long <laughs> journey, see. I used to be the roadie. I used to carry the equipment from my brother's back. How could be a long journey when you were in it at 17? Yeah. <laughs> obviously, obviously, Finally, all those years paid when, off. So I used to, like, daydream, you know, I'd plug it all in and watch them play and get completely jealous. And every night I'd go to bed hoping and praying that something terrible was going to happen to one of them so I could step in, <laughs> right? And uh, then all of a sudden I'd get my chance and uh, I step in and... And this happens. Know, Talk us through this one, Ryan. This is... Oh, this is in... What uh, are you wearing? This is in the London Dungeons, right? And um, it's the first video, for, to cut long story short, first single. But the first single did really well straight away. Oh. Went to there he is. Here we are. Number five yeah. in the charts. So how old are you there? Um, I was 18. Yeah, I was uh, I was seventeen. I'm so, when I'm, so je I'm so jealous. I'm seventeen so when I joined the band. Can I ask, did you did you manage to meet any girls being in a pop band? <laughs> <laughs> a couple. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not like a removal game. Jimmy. No, it's not that. I mean, it's not that. <laughs> it's easy pickings. Jimmy, what were you like at school? I had two very distinct phases at school. So up oh. to the age of sixteen, yeah. I sort of messed around, and then after that, I got very serious and academic. Right. But up to the age of 16... Tell me about the messing around. <laughs> I mean, I got, in, I got in a little bit of trouble at school for throwing a, 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 a desk uh, leg at a teacher in a class. <laughs> a but, I mean, that was, that was basically a riot. I mean, it was like... <laughs> it was the, the, the teacher had no control at all, and we, we, in the lesson, ripped up the furniture and threw it at him. <laughs> and eventually... <laughs> and eventually... We should not be laughing at this. I know, it doesn't... We should not be laughing at this. And then I went to the deputy heads, like, he was in charge of discipline. Yeah. And, and he went, what's happened? And I went, oh, the thing is, though, he's kind of... And the deputy head went, yeah, I know, but you can't do that. <clears throat> and let, let us off. Just went, yeah, I think he's useless. You needed a firm hand, but he wasn't one. Yeah. He, was, he was not a firm hand. He was hand. not a firm hand. <laughs> Charlie, can you compete with that in the... In, were you a, a hellraiser? Uh... Kind Throwing of. furniture at teachers? We had a lot of teachers. To be honest, I was get more giving sort of marriage advice to teachers hiding in a cupboard, cos like, hey, there what, was a what, lot of te what? teachers who had, like, nervous breakdowns at our school. Um, and I was more like the teacher's sort of therapist-slash-friend. 
I've got to decide which of you goes in the box, and I've decided, based on your photos and your teenage jobs, I don't think there's... Uh, I mean, there's not much competition so far. Uh, <laughs> I can't put Spandau in. Um, I'm not putting in stealing, no, she's stealing muffins for old ladies. Yeah, she's hanging upside down looking cool. But you are, in your own words, a feckless... Work shy. Work shy. I don't know what, I don't know what that is. Layabout. <laughs> Layabout group. Vibe folk. man, vibe man. Sponging off the parents of the school and dead ghost. Victoria <laughs> 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 child. <laughs> oh. yeah. uh, Martin, your son's a, a pranker. He is, yeah, he still does it. Like, even uh, today. like on, he's quite big on YouTube. He loves it, yeah, and he was a nightmare when he was growing up. Let's I mean, have he's... a look. We've got, we got, we got one of his uh, YouTube uh, pranks. Oh, listen, what he, had, he, what he had done is injected that donut oh, with the hottest chilli sauce. <laughs> That's the moment. <laughs> it's the hottest chilli sauce that you can ever imagine. <laughs> yes. No, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, oh, my oh. mouth was on fire. How long has he been doing this kind of thing? Oh, is it? <laughs> He's been doing it all his life. He still does it today. But you know what, mate? I blame the parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a firm he's upbringing. Man. Right, I want to find out if you three were big prankers when you were teenagers. Jimmy? I think the biggest prank we pulled was, you know, you draw cock and balls on uh, a table when you're at school, <laughs> whatever, you know. So we did one outside. We drew one on the school field. We went on Saturday, we bought some petrol, and we did one on the school field, <laughs> and then we lit it. <laughs> and so we burnt it into the field. <laughs> like, visible from how far would that Space. Visible <laughs> <laughs> from space. Have you ever egged anyone? Any egging gone on? I went to a very violent comprehensive, uh, and the girls were really, really rough, and they used to do a thing called skimming, which I, which I think oh, has been what, used sorry? for something else, skimming. So, basically, skimming. The, the disgusting school dinners, they would skim it all. So it wasn't fully egging, but what they'd do at the end of, like, school dinners is they'd skim all the dregs <laughs> from the, the stuff, and they'd get it in, like, a little takeaway box, and they'd throw it at someone on, when we were all waiting for the bus. <laughs> and, and you'd never know who was going to get, like, skimmed. Like, like, get the skim dregs. Uh, shaved off a mate's eyebrows. I've shaved off a friend's eyebrows, yeah. While asleep? Drunk? Yeah, just people drunk and passed out. If, if someone passed out, that was... You were sort of fair game. Fair it game. was like community human. You do anything you want to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, I've got to decide which of you goes in the box after that, which is the most embarrassing. And I've got an egg here to represent pranking. Uh, and I am going to put one with... Jimmy's face. Yeah. <laughs> it's cock and balls. Always burning a cock and balls into the school field. <laughs> the PE teacher would be like, if you just do a couple more laps on the cock and ball. Yeah. <laughs> just actually, you know, you seem, you seem a bit exhausted. Just do the balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Join me after the break when I will be getting a zit firmly between my index finger and thumb and then yelping in pain as the pus hits the bathroom mirror. Don't miss it. <laughs> Welcome back to Growing Pains, the show that barges into your teenage life unannounced, demands to know what you've been getting up to and how you intend to pay for the damage. And I can tell you that Jimmy is currently trashing the competition <laughs> with his shameful teenage shenanigans. <laughs> well, let's see if Charlie and Martin can claw back some points. Now, if I've learnt one thing, it's that teenagers get a little bit obsessed with stuff. And it could be anything. Lawn mowing, indoor rowing, a young Jim Bowen, or why the cattle in the Bible are always a low-in. They often <laughs> found whiling away the days, the weeks, or even years on the weirdest of weird shit. Yes, I'm talking about teenage obsessions. As always, I'm interested in peak embarrassment, and the most embarrassing obsessions go in the box. So, Jimmy, what did you... Waste your time doing. I mean, what were you obsessed with? I was quite into, and it's very of the of the era, video nasties, which were sort of horror movies. But there was a moral outrage around them. I don't think I would have been interested if there hadn't been a moral outrage. But there was kind of Mary Whitehouse moral outrage. These films are dangerous and they're corrupting our youth. And I went, what? Can we see those? What a surprise that you like them. I love them. I mean, <laughs> I think it sort of kicked off with things like The Evil Dead and yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then it was stuff like. I spit on your grave and <laughs> drill a killer. Let's have a look at a clip. This is Evil Dead, which is definitely <laughs> video nasty territory. <laughs> this is tremendous. That's not going to end well, is it? 
<laughs> the sound effects are amazing. Oh, so I mean, I want to see that. Good, it does look right? really fun. Yeah, I want to <laughs> see. I think it looks fun. Yeah, it's like the ghost train by the Link Center in Swindon. Like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah. So what was the appeal? So the Evil Dead. That was one. I of... think it was the the appeal was like I used to watch them with my friend Matt, and then we got kind of got more and more into it. And so you go to the video store and go, well, what's worse than that? And you go, well, what about this? Are they getting stuff from from under the? Oh, a little like, bit, yeah, hey, because lads, you're like, you're like well, this. because there was weird myths around them of like they banned this one. If they yeah. banned it, you'd go, oh, that's that's the one we want to see. And so yeah. the moral outrage, obvious, obviously, as a teenager, that you went, oh, I'll have a bit of that. Yeah, great. Ch <laughs> check out this unusual response. If anyone can stand up and defend the sort of horrific scenes that I have had to see and other members of Parliament have had to see. His name's Graham I Bright, he's a Tory councillor. ..to that world that I live in. I believe that uh, research is taking place and it will show that these films not only affect young people, but I believe they affect adults as well. <laughs> <Go start. laughs> I mean, I mean, but if you see that on the news, of course you go, I want to see the films of that guy. Of course you like. do. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I'm bringing the dog. I definitely, <laughs> want, I definitely <laughs> want to see if the dog, how it affects the dog. It's the first thing you do, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the dog's dog sitting there like that. <laughs> uh, Martin, what were you obsessed with when you were... I was obsessed with anybody with a lot of charisma. It was Marlon Brando, Bruce Lee... It was Elvis. Oh, <laughs> really oh, yeah, it's 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 it. Magnetic. You can't take your eyes off him. <laughs> We've got a clip here, not about the phone. We've got a clip of Bruce Lee, uh, Enter the Dragon, yeah. this is. This is the kind of fella you were drawn to. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't know why I was drawn to him. It was just, this is what charisma is. Nobody really knows what it is, do they? You know? Yeah, it's There's very... There's certain people that I mean... just steal the room. But it was... Bruce Lee was at a time when you remember the kung fu craze that yeah. was going on. Listen to the sound effects, yeah. <laughs> oh! The little <laughs> twist. That's, that's, that's somebody getting the old melon, that is. <laughs> yeah, that's how they do it. Yep. They, they're straight out of the video nasty school yeah. of sound effects. Yeah. Incredible. So, was it like uh, your Steve McQueen's and your Paul Newman's and all those kind of guys? Yeah. It was anybody that was on television that, you know, when somebody... There's a scene going on. And even if they're not speaking, you can't take your eyes off them. And it wasn't a sexual thing, I don't think. Oh, maybe it was. I'd fuck Elvis. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I found a website called The Top Tens, and one of their users has compiled a list of the most charismatic people of all time, and we've got the top 25. Let's have a look at the whole list, the whole top 25. Here we go. Any surprises there? Let's look Rowan at Atkinson. Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, Rowan yeah. Atkinson at really? nine. Yeah, absolutely. OK. Yeah, just behind Elizabeth II. Uh, <laughs> number six, is, number six is troubling, I think. Number six, Adolf Hitler. Charismatic. The only good thing about Hitler is he did kill Hitler. <laughs> yeah. He should get credit for that. <laughs> Oscar Wilde, that's a good one. Yeah. I 23, like... Neil Armstrong. Yeah, 23, Neil Armstrong. He no. was probably the most uncharismatic man, but was quietly charismatic, if you know what I mean. Yeah. He was the guy that was standing in the back of the corner, but the first man who ever walks on the moon? It's good bragging rights. But what? Buzz Aldrin what? had the charisma. He had Buzz the... Aldrin, not on the list. <laughs> he's got so many stories. He could keep... He's got busy. one story. Oh, no, he's got... <laughs> he hasn't. He's got one story. Good I one, went... though. Have I told you about the time I went to the moon? <laughs> yeah, you have, Neil. Yeah, <laughs> you have. You mentioned that the first time we met, <laughs> and then every other fucking time. <laughs> what? Piqued the interest of a young Charlie. So we've got a, a ribbon down there. Can you explain that to me? And what, what's that Oh, one? this was the gymnastics team that I was in in Swindon, which is not really a claim to fame because we were notorious for being terrible. I actually did a routine to one of your biggest hits. To gold. Gold, of course. My favourite move. What was it? What was it? The judges said the the wedgeography was spectacular. <laughs> so I used to get like a really bad wedgie in my leotard. <laughs> I had to sort of. I'd do very good emphatic wafting so that I could pull it out of my ass crap. <laughs> that was my skill. You never thought you'd see the day where somebody did emphatic wafting and pulled out their ass crap to gold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would like to see it. So, I would like to see your emphatic wafting and and wedge geography. Okay. <laughs> it's gold by Spandau Ballet. And you've got to remember, it doesn't matter what you do in gymnastics, right? As long as you finish with a. <laughs> <laughs> That's not That's not pretty much finish. anything.
did you go to circus school? Yeah, I went to circus school, yeah. No offence to the years of training, <laughs> but Jimmy was in a league of his own. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> funny. Yeah. So, I've got to decide whose obsessions are the most embarrassing, and I think, after all that time, quick, spontaneous effort, Jimmy is better than you at rhythmic gymnastics. <laughs> I think your teenage obsession is going in the box, Charlie. I'm afraid <laughs> that I'm going to put you in the box. This, your... Is it called a ribbon or is there a technical name for it? A ribbon. A ribbon. A ribbon. No, you a didn't rhythm. even know that. Jimmy was genuinely better. <laughs> Sorry. Gutted. Join me after the break when I'll be spending all day Saturday in an arcade blowing my £10 pocket money trying to win the £2 jackpot on a fruit machine. <laughs> in a bit. Welcome back to Growing Pains, where my guests are busy mining their teenage years in an effort to be crowned most embarrassing teenager. And I can tell you that Jimmy and Charlie are in a dead heat with Martin so far, proving far too cool to put the punch on the ball. So, <laughs> we've all heard of mixtapes, your favourite songs on one tape. Well, this is the opposite. My guests have chosen the things that annoyed, confused and embarrassed them as teenagers and that have stuck in their heads ever since. If they end up going to hell, this is the video reel that's playing on a loop in the welcome lounge. <laughs> so let's have a look at my guests' mixtapes from hell. First up, Charlie. I'm going to have a look at your mixtape now. Scatman. I'm a scatman. Tea time traumatizing thrills of the demon head master. It just used to terrify me to hide behind the sofa because he would like to do that brainwashing thing. What's next? An advert for milk tray. Budget James Bond to the rescue. <laughs> The bloke's putting this much effort into delivering you chocolate. He is probably cheating on you. <laughs> and all because the lady loves Cadbury's milk tray. Plenty going on there. <laughs> that was I will, a lot. Uh, a lot we can go there. through it. We had the toe tapping bit flying rhythms of Scatman John. Oh. Not a fan. I like that song. Well, God, it, sort of. it makes my skin crawl. It reminds me of nappy nights in Swindon. That's what they used to call them, which I think is cruel. <laughs> but it was like the local uh, alcohol-free under-18 club night, and everyone used to go and they used to try and scat along to that, and it was just... I have horrible memories of that. Not your scene. Not my scene. Uh, we had the James Bond of the gift in chocolate world with a massive budget uh, <laughs> milk tray advert. Well, this is cringe, cos, yeah, he was James Bond to me. He just looked so cool and sharks were into him, ladies loved him, I wanted ladies to love me. So I basically wanted to be the milk tray man. And I used to give um, boxes of milk tray to, no. like, really unattainable <laughs> no. people. So, like, my teachers and straight girls, basically, <laughs> would just get, like, a melted milk tray that fit in my rucksack. Yeah. I literally tried Ladies to be your school's milk tray. Milk tray. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, <laughs> Did it ever work? Couple of it the was teachers. hit and miss. It was hit and miss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what else did we have? Meredith Brooks' bitch. We used to write the lyrics down secretly under the wallpaper as if we were leaving messages what do you, what do you mean? to the future generation. I don't know why we did it. I think you I must used to have peel the wallpaper up in your bedroom. Peel the wallpaper down in the bedroom. And I wrote, I got in so much trouble for this, the entire lyrics to Meredith Brooks' bitch because we weren't allowed to swear. And this was me rebelling. And I'd write the lyrics on the wall and then use Colgate toothpaste to paste it back up. And I thought I was like... Sorry, it was you were in a prison, yes? <laughs> Some sort of juvenile detention. Why, why did you get into trouble? Was it so it was found, presumably? You got rumbled. Because it was found, and my mum's held up with toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it was found. Why didn't you, why didn't you use glue or? Print? Well, we, I don't know. Just Colgate was available. <laughs> well, thanks for that, uh, Martin. Let's have a, let's have a look yeah. at what you've chosen for your mixtape. Let's have a look. King of the mullets, there. This is, of course, the classic 1972 Top of the Pops appearance that's galvanised the nation. <laughs> Pearl and Dean, no idea who they were, but they loved a trumpet. Johnny Amazing Adams weapon. The Wouldn't get that through an airport Johnny now, Martin. <laughs> like a Tommy gun. Great display of the traditional art of sound effects. With Johnny Seven, the one-man army gun. 
Those kids old enough to be doing a Ouija board? What a lovely child's game, the Ouija board. <laughs> Comes with a free visitation from Satan. <laughs> The seductive sound of Marvin Gaye. Trying to hold back this feeling so long. Brings back some terrible memories. Uh, why is that on your mixtape from Well, because hell? I remember being... A, I must have been 15, and I went to a, a party with one of my brother's mates. So Gary's two years older than me, right? right? So it seemed really grown up when I was there. And I started dancing with this girl, and in the end, we ended up kissing... And what I didn't know was it was my brother's girlfriend. <laughs> so it was Gary's girlfriend I was kissing. And every, I knew his mates come over and told me, you shouldn't have done that. What? Oh, my goodness. It caused such trauma in my house. I can't tell you. <laughs> Why didn't she say then? She didn't say anything. Cos she was getting off with you. <laughs> she was getting say? off with a good-looking one. <laughs> <laughs> she thought she'd had an upgrade. So now when you Engaged, yeah, kind of, of like just puts a chill up my spine. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It started with uh, Bowie, Starman. You met him later. Bowie? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I met him. And, uh, well, the first time I ever met him was terrible because um, uh, I was at a party and I must have only been about 17. And, uh, you know, I see Bowie on the other side of the room and he's absolutely my idol. And so I have a few drinks and a few more and a few more. In the end, I'm absolutely pissed. And I go over. <laughs> get the courage up, shake his hand, and the moment I touched his hand, everything just kind of... The room span, and I just went... <laughs> and landed on the, on the deck. It was the, the worst moment of my life. <laughs> all, all I remember is Bowie, look, Bowie looking at me going... I met David Bowie when I was 17. It's like, this is not... That's not embarrassing, that's great. And, 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 and it is drunk. embarrassing yeah. when you shake his hand and you fall over because you're so drunk. Even, even then, you met Bowie. Even and then, you've got you a great Bowie. story. Even no, then, well, you've got a great story. You're a bloody legend. Us, the rest of us, mate, were just me meet, meeting just somebody who worked at the local spa, shaking their hand and falling over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pearl and Dean, now, that, for me, just it says excitement, of the cinema. Yeah, Pearl know. and Dean brings back a moment in time for me. I'm in Holloway Road Cinema, watching the movie... All of a sudden, you can hear these giant thunderclaps going on around the outside of the building. And all of a sudden, there's water pouring in through the light fittings. <laughs> the this rain is was a hell so of an heavy. immersive cinema experience. The <laughs> rain was so heavy. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> and the guy came in, he said, all right, everyone's got to leave, you know, um, there's something going on outside. And all of a sudden, the, this giant wave comes <laughs> in the door <laughs> and hits me from behind. And I look round, and the whole of Holloway Road it's flooded. There's people <laughs> swimming up Holloway Road. And I'm looking out thinking, the whole of London is flooded. Uh, and so... Sorry, how much LSD had you taken? <laughs> 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 this, this is definitely a drug I am, story. I am literally swimming... Literally. No! Literally up Holloway swimming. Road. <laughs> you and swam then, out of the cinema, up the Holloway Road. I, had to... I think you might still be high now. <laughs> <laughs> I had to swim so you swam to Hyper <laughs> Corner. Yeah. Oh, this is good. This is. You, are you just realising how many drugs you were taking? No, this is true. It's yeah, true. sure. No, of course. <laughs> that time I swam it's from true. the Holloway Road to Hyper Corner. Yeah, of course you, it's true. You took out your sodden <laughs> underground map and you were like, hang on, which way to Wood Green? <laughs> Oh, no, I can't go to Wood Green. The tide's not going that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's such a great story. Oh, I love it. So amazing. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Johnny Seven toy, that very black and white uh, toy. Johnny, gun, Johnny Seven, that? right. So, um, it was the toy that kind of... My mum and dad couldn't afford to buy us at Christmas. And we all wanted it. Every kid in Britain, every boy in Britain wanted a Johnny Seven gun. And um, a couple of years ago, Roman got me a present for Christmas. And I was standing there, opening it up, and it was a Johnny Seven, right? <laughs> and I must have burst into tears. Honestly, I couldn't stop crying They're for, lovely. like, half an hour. Wow. Looking that at this plastic so toy. Wow. And, so it's uh, not just it's a just... little shit who fills your donuts with chilli. <laughs> oh, listen, man, it was uh, one of oh, the wow. nicest moments ever. Um, Ouija board. Wait, I mean, I, I mean I'm terrible, slightly... Yeah. I slightly take the piss out of them, but I'm also slightly terrified of Ouija boards, so I don't quite know why. <laughs> yeah, why, we, why is that on your... Why is Ouija, Ouija board was probably one of the most frightening things that I've ever done, but I was obsessed with it when I was a kid. And one night, there was me, my brother, uh, Steve Strange and Billy Idol. 
What, sorry? <laughs> Billy Idol. Yeah, you weren't cool as a teenager. <laughs> no, right. I'm yeah. just, oh, oh, my We've unbelievable. Now I'm just Billy Idol. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived a strange life. And uh, we get the Ouija board out, and all of a sudden it says, dun, 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 don't move. So all of us together jump up, screaming. Right. It's <laughs> Steve Strange. Well, it spells out, don't move. Yeah. And then, then you all move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve Strange, right? Because well, you do, because it scares you, right? We all jump up, and as we run to the door, without a word of a lie, these heavy velvet curtains that have been in the wall for probably, what, 20 years, 30 years, come flying out of the wall. A lot of LSD round in the 70s. Just be careful with drugs. <laughs> 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 it's um, uh, absolutely true. There you go. So did you get a name for this spirit? <laughs> the name of the spirit? No, but I, I worked out... They sometimes get their name, don't they? Yeah, but no, so they do. Out. The name of the spirit that I was talking to when I was a kid was a guy called Len, right? <laughs> and he kept through to me all the time. Every time I did it, he said, here's Len. And so I didn't know who Len was. I went back to my mum and dad, and I actually told them what I was doing, and I said, this guy called Len keeps coming up. And my dad went white. He goes, yeah, that was my best friend at work who died two years ago. <laughs> Everyone's gone hell. scared. Everyone's gone quiet. OK. Boom! Oh! <laughs> I feel like a teenager again. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jimmy, let's have a look at your mixtape. Sure, let's. Ross, when will I be famous? When will I be famous? Singing Ringing Tree. Great insight into the lifestyle of furries. <laughs> this guy's pretty cool at nagging. Check this out. Now you don't look quite so ugly. Still ugly. So is it unexpected? Not so much unexpected it's as uh, embarrassing, really. it's absolutely batshit. Fertility. This is a guy turning into a bee. They didn't like to mention it. You know how we had tried for years to. There he goes. <laughs> it's the hairy arms I'm more worried about. Wimpy, the classic. Hey you, we're having a wimpy song. This is before advertisers realised food could look appetising. <laughs> Love Wimpy. Love Wimpy. Mm. Little diced onions. We started with Ross. Ross, I think their only purpose in the world is to make Jedwood look talented. I <coughs> just, even at the time, just <laughs> awful, just the worst. And I cared about music so much as a teenager, I just found it an, aff an affront. <laughs> I hated it. OK. Uh, the Singing Ringing Tree. Not a just, not just something I've seen before. Oh, it's oh, you should. It was kind of on randomly. It was like you got TV on sort of during the day in the holidays, and they would sometimes put on this weird German show called The Singing Ringing Tree, which was like a Wizard of Oz thing, but it was dubbed from German into, and it was so weird and creepy, and it was just odd. So that was bad dubbing. When did the bear just tell her she was ugly or something? In not, the not, not that ugly. <laughs> That's very odd. Disturbing. Tells you the unexpected. You can't hate that either, surely. It freaked me out. It was like sort of the black mirror of our generation yeah. was. That looks like a very pervy clip. Like Yeah. He turns into a bee, it gets worse. It's really <laughs> Is that what happens? I think it's called Royal Jelly or something. It is. It's like <laughs> it, this insane. It, it just kind of It was it was stuff it, to it, freak it's unsettling, you out. wasn't it? As a teenager, those were a bit unsettling. I kind of like I mean, looking back on it now with the horror movies as well, I kind of liked unsettling stuff. Yeah. I still do. <laughs> the advert for Wimpy. I got drunk with my friend and we were walking back to his house and we had to walk past our school and he was starving. And this is days before Deliveroo yeah. and 24-hour McDonald's. So we broke into the school and he cooked a burger <laughs> in, the, in the home ec bit, got a burger out of the fridge, broke into the school, cooked a burger and then broke back out. Broke two windows because we didn't go in the way we came out. Mm. <laughs> We jump started an America round. That was quite a, that was quite a good joke. Uh, literally, you can bump start them. Ooh. Yeah. You can bump start America. Those big ones with the horses at the fairground and the lights, so you can bump start them. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it takes quite a few of you to get, even, it, get it going. Even circus school didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, time to make my decision of whose mixtape goes in the uh, box. And I think, Martin, I think, it might be, I think it might be you. Falling over in front of Bowie, and then your spirit man called Len. Yeah. It's, all, it's all a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Your mixtape, little VHS tape with your Great name on it, is going in the box. Because yours is the most embarrassing, you think.
Uh, join me after the break when I'll be putting two tubs of gel in my hair, going to a house party, then spending six hours watching the love of my life stick her tongue down my best mate's throat. See you in a bit. <laughs> Tune, Welcome back to Growing Pains, where we explore the hidden horrors of our guests' teenage lives and try not to throw up. <laughs> and I can tell you it's a three-way tie, so it's all to be decided after this. <laughs> now, all evening, my guests have been bravely oversharing their teenage lives, and with the best will in the world, we couldn't fit it all in. So I've put together a quick-fire quiz to mop up any embarrassing teenage leftovers. As always, I am looking for the most embarrassing revelations, and the most embarrassing will go in the box. The rules are simple, just buzz in when you think you recognise yourself and say, that was me. And uh, just to warn you, we have checked uh, some stories with some of your friends and family just to make sure we're getting the full story. <laughs> so, ready? Fingers on buzzers. Who cheated in their exams at university? Car. That was me, I think, but I can explain. OK, please so, do. I'm quite... Dyslexic. <laughs> I'm quite uh, a cheat. No, I'm, I'm quite, dis <laughs> quite, quite dyslexic. So I did my finals and they said, they're illegible. We can't read these. The person marking them can't read them. So could you read them out and we'll type them up? So I, and then I read them out and sort of just went, well, I've got a do-over now. I can make them better. So I think I effectively cheated in my yeah. finals. Yeah. Can, they, can they retract your degree now? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. Good just luck. checking. Good luck. Try it. <laughs> Bring it, Kate. <Kevin. Yeah. laughs> Who was once so worried about being late for work they turned up seven hours early at 1.30 a.m.? Kim. That was me. That was you, Martin. <laughs> yeah. And, I, you know, I was... Listen. At least I was punctual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who was so worried about being late for school that they would sleep in their school uniform? George. That was me. Charlie? I was, I was a very anxious child and I, like, and I was also a teacher's pet and so I was like, I was really stressed out about the time it would take in the morning to get ready so I'd sleep in my full school uniform. <laughs> like a psychopath. Like a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, on we go. Who once injured themselves while doing a Dukes of Hazard? Oh, I... Car. Yeah, that was me. I was, um... <laughs> I think we are sort of at a house party, between two house parties, and some friends drove by and I tried to jump in the back window of the car. <laughs> A little bit drunk, and then fell under the wheels. Not great. Seriously injured? Generally fine. Didn't break anything. <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> Who once got chased during a game of football by a man in a straight jacket? Kim. Me. I uh, did. I'm not even going to ask. Uh, it's uh, definitely, I, definitely the drugs. Uh, I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> no. OK. Uh, who wowed their friends by bending their thumb back? Kim. Oh, that was me. It runs in the family. Uh, <laughs> Romans get the same thing, which is a thumb that does that. Can you do that? Do you know no, what? No one can do that. Do you know what, Martin? <laughs> this is going to be a bit of a moment. <gasps> can you do it, Rod? Hey, there you go! <laughs> I've never met anybody in my life who... Another... Per an oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> that is not normal. Who kept homemade perfume under their bed? George. That was me. Homemade perfume? Yeah, I was trying to get out of Swindon. I thought I was going to sell it to Paris, but it was just stuff from our medicine cabinet <laughs> and um, some of my mum's poison, which I thought was, like, toxic, but it turns out it's a very expensive Christian Dior potion. So what did you stick in it? It had, like, cow pole in it, mud, worms, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. bit of Listerine <laughs> and poison. Oh. Uh, <laughs> who measured their friend's penis? <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> George. <laughs> that was me. We were playing the video game Tekken 3 and my friend turned to me and asked me if I would look at his penis and tell him if it was big or small and I had never seen one before in my life <laughs> and I had a little look and I said it was fine. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> Nothing worse than fine. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Whose first kiss ended with a chipped tooth? Car. That, that's me, yeah. We, first kiss? Well, we sort of went in... First kind of French kiss. We went in at the same angle <laughs> and I, I slightly chipped a tooth. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Did, did the Case, kiss if go... you're watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> did the kiss go ahead? Oh, yeah, I went ahead. <laughs> cool. Drunken teenagers, yeah, fine, that'll be fine. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Time now for me to hand over to our special guest quiz host, who one of you may recognise... Who once got stoned at the bottom of my parents' garden? <laughs> George. That was me. 
That is my uh, circus tutor from circus school, <laughs> and she was so, so nice and took me in, and I used to babysit her kids when I first moved to Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> and I did get really high, <laughs> probably higher than you. <laughs> no. At the bottom on, of a garden. Come on. <laughs> You're not the only one who got high. Suddenly, suddenly there is some Hang competition. Hang on a minute, about... I never got high. <laughs> 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 you think you met David Bowie? Yeah. You're out of your mind. <laughs> there was no David Bowie. <laughs> that is the end of the quiz. Thank you very much. If you'd like to retake your seats. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Very interesting. I've got to decide uh, whose answers there are going in the box. And I think uh, Charlie, <laughs> judging your friend's penises <laughs> as fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh. no, that is you going in the box for that particular round. And that is the box full. I'm going to take that off and throw it away in my local tip. I will no doubt get bollocked by a little man in a porter cabin for putting it in the wrong bit. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so at the moment, nobody's been waiting for. It's time to announce the overall winner of tonight's most embarrassing teenager. It has swung around like a dicky pendulum tonight. Mm. Wow, it really has. <laughs> Jimmy, a very strong start, I thought. Thank you. I thought you. I thought it's going to be your night. Charlie, a strongly embarrassing performance in the, uh, in, in the rhythmic gymnastics. <laughs> um, but I think we can all agree that, that I mean, it's a very slow start, but to come so strongly from behind. Martin, <laughs> we all thought you, you were too cool to win this, that, all, you know, all this name dropping and everything, it was all, we were all jealous, it was all very cool, but actually, now we realise that you made most of it up. <laughs> 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 uh, you are tonight's most embarrassing teenager. A, oh. very su a surprise win. Yeah. A surprise win. He really did. Thank you. Really did come from nowhere there. Uh, okay, it's nearly the end of the show, so let's see how you feel about your teenage selves now you've dug them out. Uh, Jimmy, looking back, what would you say now, from a safe distance of adulthood, what would you say to your teenage self? What advice would you give? Little Jimmy, somehow, get hold of Princess Diana and warn her. <laughs> <laughs> that seems reasonable. Oh, uh, Charlie, what, what advice would you give to uh, a teenage Charlie George? Little Charlie, always be yourself. Unless you can be the milk tray man, then be him. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, tonight's most embarrassing teenager. What advice would you give to little Martin Kemp? I'd say, young Martin, make sure you enjoy every moment in life because it goes so fast. And if people don't believe your stories, tell them to fuck off. <laughs> wow. Wise words indeed. Yeah. Uh, and all very moving. That is it for tonight. Thanks to my guests, Charlie George, Jimmy Carr, and our most embarrassing teenager, Martin Kemp. And remember, kids, you're only young once, so don't pause it up. Good night. <laughs>